So is Turkey's ambitions to become a major energy hub set to be a reality? Are there any risks involved? To answer that, I'm joined by Matthew Briza, who is a senior fellow at the Atlantic Council, and Fidesz Katman, who is a professor of international relations at Aydın University and the director of the Energy Politics and Markets Applied Research Center here in Istanbul. Welcome to both of you. Good to have you on the show. Fidesz, let me start with you. Uh, besides the obvious monetary benefits, what does Turkey set to gain from being in a strategic position on this energy corridor to Europe? Uh, since the uh, setup of uh, Baku Tbilisi Ceyhan pipeline, Turkey uh, opened a new chapter in its uh, energy uh, sec sector, uh, playing a major role uh, in transition of uh, Caucasian and Central Asian uh, energy resources to the to the European markets. So, in that manner, Turkey. Uh, has another factor in Turkish-European uh, Union relations, while uh, European Union tries to get rid of the dependency on Russian natural gas. So Turkey is in a very strategic location, which contributing to the goal of uh, the European Union in the di diversification of the energy resources and the decrease in the dependence on Russian gas. And moreover, uh, with the recent pipelines like Turkstream and uh, TANAP, uh, Turkey puts another goal, uh, like uh, being an energy trade hub uh, mm. for uh, for the region uh, mainly. So these pipelines play a major role uh, in that manner. Okay, uh, we're going to get a little bit more into these topics a little bit later on, but I want to bring Matthew into the conversation. Uh, Matthew, these energy, these massive energy products, mm. it's it, it's easy to see the benefits of it, mm -hmm. but they also probably do come with some inherent geopolitical risks, don't they? Yeah, well, this one in particular, because Turkey, throughout the time I've worked with Turkey, beginning in 1998, uh, had a strong alignment with the United States and the rest of our NATO allies uh, to do exactly the first part of what Phillies was saying, which is help Europe diversify its supplies of natural gas away from Russia. Well, this project brings a lot more Russian natural gas to Turkey. Uh, some of that gas will be consumed in Turkey, but most will end up being consumed in uh, EU markets. So it will, the, the project will end up helping Russia strengthen its market share in Europe uh, and help Russia be able to continue using energy as a political tool uh, when it so desires. And, and we're gonna get into that. And Fidesz, I wanna turn back to you. How does the Turkstream project sort of uh, change the dynamics of the existing uh, pipe infrastructure network, both within Turkey and around Turkey? And, and how does it change the dynamics of some? Uh, as mentioned by uh, Mr. Bryza, uh, it is uh, very much after the uh, sanctions imposed on, on Russia that this Turkstream project is uh, offered to Turkey by uh, Vladimir Putin, the Russian president. So it's a kind of uh, attempt to uh, derail the process that European Union tries to change the uh, tendency from taking Russian gas uh, into the markets by looking at other alternatives. So in order to follow the similar tendency, Russia chose Turkey to take the Russian gas to Turkish territories and from Turkey they want to continue to sell their natural gas to the European Union. But with the hands of the uh, with, with the hands of the Turks, so it's a kind of alternative way to get rid of this diversific diversification policy of the European Union and also a decrease in the dependency on 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 Russian natural gas, and it is somehow can be attributed as. Uh, it has both positive and uh, negative uh, dimensions for Turkey. Uh, it will increase the Turkish dependence on uh, Russian gas, number one. But uh, Russia also tries to keep Turkey in its uh, own foreign policy to have more relations. So they would like to keep Turkey in their uh, dimension to f impose some kind of uh, policies on Turkey. So it's, it's, it's a multifaceted yeah. sort of uh, a project. It doesn't come with just one yeah. sort of uh, one way. All right, uh, Matthew, back to you. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at this uh, pipeline, it, it bypasses Ukraine and it comes at a time when uh, ties between uh, Turkey and Russia are deepening. It also comes at a time when uh, the relations with what you were just mentioning between uh, its allies on both sides are of the Atlantic are fraying. Um, mm -hmm. That's such a perspective for us. Um, well, you provide this bit of perspective. I, I think probably Washington is thinking about applying sanctions to one half of the Turkstream project. There are two pipes that go under the Black Sea. 
The first one delivers gas to Turkey for its consumption internally. The second one, as we were saying, as Felice was saying, de delivers that gas to Europe. I think that second pipe has a chance of facing some sanctions from Washington, just as there's movement ahead in Washington to sanction a totally different pipeline, a Russian pipeline to Germany called Nord Stream. <laughs> Um, so that's going to create uh, uh, some serious tension, additional tension in U.S.-Turkey relations. But one bit of good news is that I think Washington has decided not to sanction that first pipe of Turk Stream because Washington realizes, yeah, Turkey, Turkey needs more natural gas supplies. But the problem is that Turk Stream is intended, as you said, to bypass Ukraine. It's intended, therefore, to squeeze Ukraine, to deny Ukraine revenues from gas transit that Russia mm -hmm. had been paying. And I think we're going to see another gas war uh, this winter when Russia cuts off all gas to Ukraine and will instead try to supply its customers in Europe using Turk Street. So how does Turkey play its cards in, this, in, this, uh, in, in these interesting times? Uh, Turkey tries to keep ties with both sides uh, simultaneously, which is not easy. So Turkey uh, sees itself in the, in the Western flank by uh, membership, uh, with the goal of membership to the European Union and try to have a better relations with uh, Washington, despite the recent tensions between United States and Turkey. Moreover, Turkey uh, has similar interests uh, with regard to regional problems. Uh, namely the, the Syrian situation. Mm -hmm. So uh, Turkey tries to keep its relations with Russia in, in, in a very uh, good way in, because uh, Turkey has a, a, a kind of uh, factor, Russian factor in its Syrian policy, which is vital. So Turkey, can, uh, Turkey does not have enough uh, cards to get rid of uh, Russian influence in its foreign policy. Both of you were mentioning uh, the two pipelines crossing the back, say the second one, providing uh, uh, energy resources to Europe. How do those countries feel with Turkey being uh, a distributor or a transit mm -hmm. country or an energy hub? Uh, there is this uh, debate in, 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 the, in the literature whether this hub thing is a real thing or not, because in order to be a hub, uh, the, lots of requirements are necessary. Whether Turkey meets those requirements or not, it's a big, there's a big question mark. So instead of using the hub thing, uh, Turkey tries to follow with, with the initial phase like energy trade hub instead of an energy hub uh, dimension. So with regard to Caucasus countries, uh, Turkey's uh, Turkey option as a Turkey as an option is a favorite one. But with regard to Central Asian countries, uh, because of the uh, agreement signed with Russia, uh, Russia tries to manipulate them in, in, instead of taking those gas through Turkey. Russia put some kind of long-term agreements on the Central Asian uh, gas uh, things. That's why Turkey does not have that kind of uh, good place in the Central Asian gas resources. But with regard to the Caucasus resources, Azerbaijan uh, and Turkish relations are, are increasing mm -hmm. thanks to TANAP, thanks to other uh, pipes. Uh, Matt, one of the themes that you were saying is that um, that Russia is, is, is using projects like Turkstream to sort of increase its influence in, in, mm -hmm. in Europe's uh, backyard, yep. uh, per se. How much of an instrument is um, natural gas used as a political instrument for Russia in this field? It used to be a bigger political instrument than it is today. 15 years ago, 10 years ago, there weren't as many alternative supplies of gas into the rest of Europe. Today we have liquid natural gas coming in from every corner of the earth. And we're in a period now when the European Union has invested in all sorts of other smaller pipelines to link various European countries. So if you have a gas shortage in country A, they can get the gas from country B. So it's a much better situation than it used to be. But 10 years ago, put it this way, I had one prime minister of a central European country tell me, uh, if they cut off the gas flow, if the Russians cut off the gas flow in winter, my political career is finished because I'll be blamed for people being cold and some could freeze to death. They could die. So it used to be sometimes a very serious matter. Now... Well, uh, tell that to the Ukrainians then. Yeah, no, exactly. And so the Ukrainians have been working with the European Union, with us in the, in the United States, to get different new supplies of natural gas. Uh, a year ago, they didn't import any gas from Russia. Didn't need to. So the Ukrainians are positioning themselves to be able to get through uh, this sort of a cutoff that is coming. Uh, in January of this year, there, I mm -hmm. think there'll be no more gas flowing into Ukraine from Russia. So what I have difficulty in understanding is that despite this sort of ongoing showdown between Russia and the West, um, you have gas shipments between from Russia to countries like Turkey, to European countries, reaching an all-time high in the year 2018. Um, yet they decide to move forward with all these energy projects with Russia. They're okay with that. 
Isn't there a little bit of irony here? Yeah, there's a lot of irony, yeah, and it's, uh, uh, it's a, a, a strange situation where there is an overabundance of natural gas in the market. I mean, it's a buyer's market right now. There really is no need for this additional infrastructure coming from Russia to Turkey or the EU other than because Russia wants to squeeze Ukraine and cut Ukraine out of the deal. And so what you see happening is the West is acquiescing to this Russian policy of squeezing Ukraine using energy. And I think a lot of leaders in Europe are benefiting uh, politically and economically, mm -hmm. and I think sometimes personally. On that note, unfortunately, we come to the end. Of the, we, sh we wish we had more time, but Felice Katman and Matthew Brisa, thank you very much for the conversation. I do appreciate it. Thank you.